All right, folks, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video that we just made. And, um, you know, just to tell you, that's what three hours can do when you've got friends slash unpaid actors slash crew, and we all kind of pitch in and make the whole thing work. But, uh, you know, it was a very cold evening. It was very, very dark. And that's exactly what we wanted to do because we were shooting that video on the brand new Nikon D7000. We really wanted to push the low light performance, and we know the camera's going to deliver great video. All the other series of cameras with Nikon do good video and good light. We wanted to see what this could do in, in low light conditions. So we shot the entire video anywhere between ISO 800 and ISO 3200. And as you can see, um, we thought the quality came out really well. We certainly weren't disappointed. Uh, we did find in post-production the Nikon files didn't like to be boosted too much in post. So make sure your exposures are accurate. Make sure you're collecting enough light. But, you know, at high ISO, we were happy with the results that we got. And you'll be waiting a long time for this camera. This is a really exciting thing for Nikon users, especially because Canon's been owning the video market with their SLRs. Their cameras give you lots of frame rates. They give you 1080p video, mic input, manual control. And this is the first camera that Nikon's made now that couples those things. We get 1080p video. We get 24 frame per second uh, at uh, 1080p. We, on we only get 30 frame per second if we go down to 720p, and there is no 60 frame per second option. Not a huge deal, it'd be nice to have, but anyways. The camera also incorporates manual control. We get aperture control, we get shutter speed control, and ISO. So, you know, this really does give Canon run for its money. You've got the mic input on the side, of course, as standard. And Nikon has given us a bit of a more basic rudimentary system. You've got a high, medium, low gain control for the microphone. But again, set it to low, give it a good, strong signal from a good mic, and you're gonna get nice results. So, you know, this is a cool camera. We're gonna talk about the still aspect of this as well, because this is really kind of leaped forward for Nikon. It's a good step forward in their cameras, but the video was excellent. We were very, very excited about it. We'll see if they refine some of the uh, features that we're talking about in the future, things like maybe new frame rates. And one thing that I do have to talk about that I didn't like on the camera. Well, when you guys are shooting your video on the back of the screen, the live view mode selector is really, really easy. You've got it right there. It brings it up. The Canons let you adjust shutter speed, aperture, and ISO at whim right on the screen while you're shooting your videos and setting up your videos. And it's nice because it does give you a live preview. Now when we're shooting this thing tonight, we did find on the Nikons that you can change your shutter speed, no problem. ISO control, no problem. But the aperture control, for some crazy reason, I haven't figured it out, we're gonna have to talk about it. I don't know why they would do this. You can't change it while you're in live view. You literally have to kick out of the live view button change your aperture, kick back into the live view and get your new update. It was ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to say any worth, worse than that. This is, a, this is a family program where we're representing a store, so I'm going I'm to behave. Um, and this issue is going to happen anytime you use any of the Nikon autofocusing uh, lenses, any of the new electrical lenses. So any autofocusing lens, you're going to have that problem. We even tried some of the Zeiss manual focus lenses, which we love for video. And if they have the electrical connection on the new series, again, we couldn't change the aperture on the fly. I actually brought some old manual Nikkor lenses from my home. Uh, we're talking the old stuff from the 70s and 80s, the AI and AIS lenses. And uh, at least there to our delight when we stuck that on the camera, we could get a live update and change the aperture immediately. So, you know, frankly, we relied on those lenses for most of the video shoot. But let's keep going, guys. Let's talk about what kind of features we have here and uh, how this does stack up as a still camera. All right, now I'm going to do something very, very different for you guys. I'm going to actually use a camera strap. I hate these things, but I know you viewers at home are probably really concerned about our cameras. Now I always dangle around like this and I'm flipping them in the air and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to put this on my neck. I'm doing this for you. There we go. All right, there we go, I won't drop it. So, as a still camera, the D90, I know uh, Jordan and I, we really care about video SLR, but the vast majority of you out there probably are never gonna touch the video function. You wanna know about the stills, so let's talk about the stills and my impressions of this camera. Um, you know, this camera's fulfilling a very, very unique niche because really, if you think about it, this is, the, this is an, a, a departure from Nikon's sort of 12 megapixel sensor that they've been so uh, keen on. They've been using 12 megapixels for a while now. And this now raises that up to 16. And of course the new D3100 raises it to 14. But this is gonna be your highest resolution camera now uh, until you get to the D3X at 24. And uh, I can see from what I've seen from the still photos, the, the resolution is very, very nice. Nikon has again, as always, managed to incorporate 
great megapixel resolution, but also really, really good low light performance in this sensor. My overall impression of the camera for feel and size is it feels a lot like a D90. In fact, the menus and controls are very much like a D90. So if you're coming from that camera, you're going to find this very, very uh, similar, very easy to get into. It's got a nice grip. It's a little bit thicker than normal. This is a magnesium alloy body and it is weather sealed and that's impressive. So it's a lot like the D300 in that respect. But if you look at the weight, I think this thing is about I don't know, 50, 60 grams more than a D90, just under 800 grams. And the, D, the D300 is almost a kilogram, you know, kind of a 900 gram kind of thing. So this is actually quite light. And that was the first thing I noticed when I picked up this camera. Very, very lightweight. They've added a few things. It's got a proper mirror lockup now. It's got a quiet shutter mode, which is again, borrowed from things like the D300. That's okay, I guess. I love that you still get the TTL flash control. This can control wireless flashes. So they kept that as a feature. Uh, other nice things, white balance control, just like the D90 or the D300, you got really advanced white balance controls, so easy to do custom white balances, and you can again tweak your color selector towards the green or magenta, red or blue, so I mean that's great. Very, very full functioning camera. When it comes to metering and autofocus, Nikon have added a brand new 2016 pixel RGB sensor. I mean Nikons do see color when it comes to metering, and they say that does help the 3D tracking. You know, this is what I'm going to say, folks. This doesn't focus quite as fast as a D300. Um, it, it won't shoot the same frame rate. This is six frames per second. D300 can push a bit higher than that. But it's really fast. It is a still a good frame rate. I could certainly see someone using this for event photography, using this for journalism, and making it work. So I think this is a great camera overall. It's going to be very, very popular because it does a lot of things in one package, especially at the price point. It's excellent. You just you can't escape the commercialization of Christmas. I mean, it's November 9th, but uh, it, it does make for a very, very good uh, subject for our high ISO test. What I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to shoot three photos. I'm going to shoot one at 200 ISO, one at 800, and one at 3200. That should give you guys a nice range. So let's go ahead and take these shots here. All right, so this is ISO 200 of our beautiful uh, festive Christmas wreath. And again, to be expected from a Nikon camera, no noise to speak of, very, very sharp detail. D7000 gets beautiful color, and we're getting a lot of resolution on that 16 megapixel sensor. When you guys move to 800 ISO here, noise is still almost completely, uh, you know, not an issue. There's just nothing here. Color is true and accurate. Noise is still very, very minimal. We're not getting any sort of degradation. At 3200 ISO, you're going to start to notice a little bit of coarse structure. Blacks, though, are still nice. We notice that the shadows are still very, very black. We don't get really any chromatic noise out of this camera. It's excellent for that. So you guys can see the D7000 is an excellent performer in low light, and yet you're getting a really substantial boost in resolution with 16 megapixels. Oh, a really quick thing I want to throw in here, guys. Check out this shutter. I mean, nice, fast frame rate, but listen how quiet that is. Hopefully you guys can hear that. And you know the other thing that's great, no mirror slap when you're using this thing. It's incredibly stable. Okay, here's what I love about the camera. It feels very solid. You're getting full metal construction, weather sealed body, a shutter rated for 150,000 shots. The camera focuses incredibly fast. It's got the TTL flash control. I mean, really, this camera at first glance feels very journalistic, yet at the same time, with the controls being laid out like a D90, it's very, very approachable for somebody starting in the entry level or coming up from something lower in the Nikon brand. At the same time, this is kind of revolutionary because this is really giving you that brand new sensor, which really now puts a Nikon user on equal footing with a Canon user as far as resolution goes. I mean, now Nikon has a camera with lots of megapixels, but at the same time, and this is great, they couple it with what Nikon always does best give you excellent detail and very low noise at high ISO. I mean, this camera's gonna be a real winners on the still market. Honestly, unless you needed the absolute fastest autofocusing possible, this really does what a D300S does well and does it for a lot cheaper. And on top of that, we are getting great movie modes. I mean, I love the new manual control. That's a totally unique thing for this camera. And I love that we've got intervalometer use. That was really nice. We got to do it with the time lapse. It was fun. Being able to use the old manual Nikkor lenses and get full accurate readings uh, from the meter, that was nice to have. I mean, really, this is culminating a lot of what's made Nikon great in one camera, and it's given us high megapixels as well. I think it's easy to see this is going to be a real, real winner. The only thing I don't like, got to change that aperture control Nikon, maybe a firmware update. I hope that they do that. So let's see if that's on the horizon. Again, that's only really going to upset video users. Otherwise, I hope to see you guys in store. Please buy this camera from me.